Warcraft today I will be going over the basics of redstone and some objects that will activate redstone permanently and not permanently and we're going to go over repeaters and comparators and stuff like that. So let's get to it. If you didn't know already, redstone is the basic wiring in Minecraft used for circuits, pistons, hidden stairs, hidden chests, stuff like that. So let's go on to it. We have our wooden pressure plate here which can be activated by your player standing on it. It can also be activated by having an item thrown on it and will emit a redstone signal and will also be activated if you have a bow and arrow and shoot at it. And it will be permanently lit with the bow and arrow until you have picked up your item and then it will stop emitting as redstone signal. Let's move on to the stone pressure plate here. Your player can walk on it and activate it. Note that when I go to throw an item on it, the stone pressure plate does not activate. That is one of the key features of the stone pressure plate, so it can only be activated by stepping on it. Let's move on to the wood button. You have two choices with your wood button to activate it. You can either click it personally to activate your redstone signal, or once again, you can take your bow and shoot it and it will activate permanently until you pick up your arrow. Now we are on to the stone button here and the only way to activate the stone button is by clicking on it and it will emit a redstone signal. Let's move on to the lever. The lever is pretty much your off and on switch for redstone. As you flick the switch by right clicking on it, it just emits the signal on or off, on or off and whatnot. Let's move on to the redstone torch. The redstone torch is a permanently on power source until you break it and then there will be no more redstone emitting through to power the system when you break it. Let's move on to the redstone repeater. As you can see here, we have a redstone torch hooked up to some redstone and the wiring goes all the way out here and then starts losing its juice and eventually no power gets out here. Well, what we're gonna do is break the line right about here. We're gonna grab ourselves our redstone repeater and we're gonna place it down. And what the redstone repeater does is it takes the redstone signal and amplifies it and pushes it further than it normally could. And on the redstone repeater, there's also a delay mechanism all the way out to four ticks. You have one tick, two tick, three tick, and four tick. And notice that there is an arrow shape, kind of, on the redstone repeater here, which means that the signal will boost it that way. If you went add and swap the signal around, the redstone repeater would not work because you're taking the input into an input and that just breaks everything. So remember that to keep that in mind that you have to point your arrow the way that you want the boost to go for the wiring. Now let's move on to the redstone comparator. I really like this. So you, we have a furnace set up here, the comparator and a repeater to boost the signal. And what happens is when we go into the furnace here and put down a object in the furnace, you notice that the furnace sends a redstone signal to the comparator and then the comparator sends the signal faintly through the redstone and then the repeater here boosts the signal. The comparator is really nifty for having hidden trap doors and activating pistons and whatnot because as soon as you take it back out the redstone signal stops. And last but not least we have the daylight sensor which senses daylight and throws out a redstone signal like so. And I use it for lights and what not in aesthetic purposes and I'll just turn it to nighttime here so you guys can see that it does not emit a redstone signal at night there you go just turn back to day well I think it will do it for this one guys if you liked the video feel free to leave a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one